However, I didn't actually buy hot dog buns. I just bought like hot dogs. Okay. That should be enough to. I really need to get my hair cut, but I'm really lazy about it. Like, my hair was about this length when I was at uh, SGDQ, but when my hair starts doing like this in the back, like, I really hate this. Like, this is obscenely long for my hair. Like, I usually never let it get this long, but, yeah, like I said, I'm just really lazy about it. <sighs> You want Smokies? Yum, that sounds really good. Okay. So this is, I guess, my hand cam. I can move this around a little bit, but it's like, you know. Delicious. Delicious. I don't even know how I want to do this. I was thinking of like moving this downward so you can like see what's going on here, but you'd barely be able to see that, and then up here it would be like, hey, there's a me can. But yeah. I guess for now I'll just move this over here and you guys can watch me rinse some rice. This is one of the things I hate most about making rice, is rinsing rice. Let's move this over here, just so you can see me do the rice thing. see like any of this. This is hilarious. I have to always look back and be like, oh, what can you guys see?
I'm not using my strainer for this, so I don't lose rays. So probably in one of my I don't know why I'm not doing it. Get my strainer up. <clears throat> I'm using my dish towel lots. I'm not a Max, yeah, curry night. And right now I'm just doing the very, very boring job of rinsing rice, which, though isn't very exciting, is it really makes a difference, to be honest. I can't really see a whole lot of what's going on on, you know, this webcam over here, this one right here. Because it's not in front of my computer. But that's fine. So when I'm doing the chicken, this delicious, delicious yellow chicken, there's a good chance that my kitchen is going to get really, really smoky because I don't have a working steam vent. So after I'm done cooking the chicken, I might have to air the place out a little bit for a sec, but I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so like all rice cookers, spill the water up to the line, put in three cups of rice, so I fill it up to the three line. By three cups of rice, I don't mean three actual cups of rice, I just mean Three scoops of rice that comes in the rice. It, it is a process to make, but it's just so worth it. So I'm just going to leave this rice cooker over here. For those of you guys who want a tour of my place, it's pretty simple. So over here, we have my sink, my closet, my fridge, and my trash can. We have my table, which I use for literally nothing except storing the microwave and the toaster. Over here we have my pantry, which is this shelf. <laughs> and then over here we have my bedroom, in which I stream. And that is my place. Very small, very to the point, but it definitely works. And then this is my door, which I go out of most days. Okay. Now let's see, how do I want to have this set up? So obviously I'm probably going to have this cam that I keep detaching 
show the food. It's not very zoomed in, but it's like, yeah. I mean, I'm the same, but I usually make a lot of this, and a friend of mine usually comes over and eats it with me, too. But not today, because I decided I wanted to do this on a whim. I like making curry for people, because curry is one of those things that's like... Um, I don't know, it's just like, you put a lot of work into it, right? And people really appreciate it. That's the kind of word I'm looking for, but I can't, can't find the word for it. I can't find how I want this camera to be angled. I kind of want to aim it down like this. Yeah, there we go. Because that is going to be real nice. But my camera is also probably going to get really fucking covered in curry this way. Hey, Atticus. I also feel like I need to move my, uh... Uh, move my stuff. I should probably plug in my laptop too, because my laptop won't be able to stream for very long without it being plugged in. Thank goodness I didn't cover up the plug-in hole. There we go. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's kind of how it is for me too, but kind of not really. So I'm one of those people that like to prepare a whole ton of stuff before I start actually doing things. So that's why I'm just kind of wandering around assembling ingredients, but not actually cooking anything yet, because I would rather have it all right in front of me and ready to go instead of suddenly having to look for something at the last second. So I'm going to... I'm just going to plug in my mouse real quick here so I can change my webcam because these are kind of wonky. Prep work is super important to me when I'm cooking. Okay, I don't know if you guys want the cook stream to be big or the me screen to be big. There's a spider on the wall over there. Please get out of my spices. Thank you. Okay. I think I'm going to make this one smaller and this one bigger. Because first off, my cook stream, or this webcam, is an HD one. And I never use this one because I usually have a second monitor plugged into my laptop when I'm streaming. And yeah, so. I guess we'll do it like this. I guess I'll put it over here for now since I'm not really cooking anything yet. And there's not really anything to see over here either. It's just me talking. Should move this up a little bit. This is the top of my top of my cupboard. There we go. <laughs> Cam girl perspective, yeah. Okay, so I think my laptop is gonna be safe from the spatters. Sort of. I'm using duct tape and paper towel to make sure it doesn't get covered because as much as I love making curry, curry does not love being a clean job. So let's just tape those in there. Okay, so everything here is safe unless it like splatters all the way onto my screen, which is like probably not going to happen. I forgot to tweet out my stream too, so that's going to be a problem. Especially since I've already covered my uh, covered my keyboard. Maybe I'll do that for my phone, because if I'm cooking, I want to sell out as much as possible here. And then I'll gather all my my spices and say duct tape ready to cook. That's the red green way. So, for those of you who live in America, this is Halloween candy, and these are Canadian Smarties. You've never seen them before. These are like shitty M&Ms, but they're good. What the hell is an Aero Bar? An Aero Bar is a chocolate bar 
that's covered in these, that's filled with these bubbles. It's like, it's like, it's, it's hard to describe, but it's got bubbles in everybody. <laughs> um, I know Nestle candy is a little bit different in uh, Canada and the U.S., Oh my god, I can't type on my phone. I'm not used to this. I need to channel the white girl in me. There we go. Okay. It doesn't have like the Milky Way stuff. I have never seen a Milky Way bar in Canada, so it's all chocolate. It just got it's just got little bubbles and stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna move my mouse. So let's see here. So I have a recipe for all my spices and stuff on this. I don't have any really cooking instructions. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble all the little spices I need on this little plate because I like being prepared. And I kind of have everything all spread around my kitchen, so that's why I like doing it ahead of time. So let's see, I'm kind of doing a 1.5 times recipe, so <laughs> you're already hungry. I mean, okay, have a look at this. This is the chicken that I had marinating yesterday. Look at it now. Look at that yellow, look at that yellow color in there. Like, oh, mm, that's so good. That's going to make my kitchen unbearable to be in in a sec because it's going to be so fucking smoky. Okay, so let's see. What do we need? One and a half teaspoons of chili powder. Alright, well this is the half teaspoon, so I guess we'll just do this three times. Normally I don't do this on a plate, I do it in a bowl, but I grabbed a plate for some reason, so. Oh wait, no, I'm doing 1.5 times, so if it's one... Wait, this is a half teaspoon, my bad. So yeah, one and a half teaspoons. One and a half teaspoons of garam masala, which is like the best smell in the world. Oh, you're having yellow curry? I've never made yellow curry. I've never made any sort of curry other than this. And I've also made, um, no, as me, it's not 1.5 I need, it's 1. So it's 1.5 that I need. I, uh, just mistook my writing. What else? Anyway. This shit is, this shit is just so good. Like, I love the smell of this shit. I love the smell of it, but I don't cook with it a lot, because the only curries I make are, what is in my pocket? Oh. <laughs> that should be in my work. Okay. What's next? Okay, so one thing that I don't do in butter chicken that I'm supposed to, but I can't find it anywhere, is methy leaves. Or fenugreek. And I can't find either one of them here, because I haven't looked real hard. So I use curry powder instead. Which is close, but not really that close. It's similar, but kind of not similar. Where is my curry powder? Two tablespoons of curry powder, Jesus Christ. I didn't have to break up my tablespoon in a while. Oh, I love the smell of curry powder too. I love the smell of all these spices. The only problem is I hate washing dishes after using them because 
They just like smell like nothing but it for a while. Okay, so three tablespoons of that. One of these days, I want to make this enough so that I don't have to measure out these spices so precisely and just kind of throw them in there. But butter chicken is really, really, really unhealthy. <laughs> so I don't. And then a tablespoon and a half. Oh my god. How long has it been since I've used this sugar? The sugar is not budging. <laughs> I'm going to have to move it with a spoon. It's marinating in the fridge. Nice. The original butter chicken recipe I used to, or I originally learned to use, had um, had you um, kind of boil the onions and and uh, onions and garlic and ginger together and stuff like that, and then blend them up. And I did that for a little bit before I found this one from a channel on YouTube. And I tried it because I was, it was like easy butter chicken, and I was like, okay, it's easy butter chicken. And it actually tastes almost exactly the same. So I stopped doing it the hard way. I started doing it the nice, easy way. I'm going to here one, one and a half tablespoons of sugar. Just to cut down on the spices a little bit. Okay, hopefully next time I use this sugar, it won't be like rock solid. <laughs> okay, are those all my spices? Sugar? Sugar? Nah, oh, fuck. Sugar, chili powder, garam masala, curry powder, and salt to taste, which is usually quite a bit, but I pinch salt, so I will figure that out when I get to it. So there's all my spices for later. Excuse me while I just brush all of my extra spices onto my floor. The only butter chicken you've ever had was from Trader Joe's. I've never been to Trader Joe's, but I've heard it's really good. Another thing that I don't use when I make this is I don't have any ghee. <laughs> So I just use butter. <laughs> oh, you like it spicy? I don't like spicy. I prefer mild, mild curry. I don't think I need to use my mouse anymore, so I'm going to remove it from the danger zone here. Um, there's this curry place that's right down the road from my, uh, that's right down the road from my place, and I actually have one of their menus here called Mantra, and um, the f probably my favorite thing to order from them is um, Lamb Rogan Josh because I love lamb, and they make it really, really spicy, <laughs> like really spicy. All right, how many, how much tomato puree do I need? I need three cups. This, I'm just going to, where did I put my tomatoes? Oh, good there. Simple. Strained, strained tomatoes, just pureed, or not pureed, but strained, strained tomatoes. And my butter, and my cream, that's all good. Cream goes in seconds, so I will find spices.
banned from spicy foods, yeah. I mean, it, it, spicy just, like, turns away most people, but I don't know, it, it kind of depends. So here we have the dish of choice that I will be cooking with. It's got a few scratches on the bottom, which means it's probably time for a new one soon, but... Yeah. And then the last thing I need to get ready is my dish, in which I have chicken, and that is just a high rimmed plate. And I'll just skip that up here. So when I'm done cooking the chicken, I can just kind of put it to the side here. Let's see if I can turn that. There we go. Nice and easy. I think I have everything ready to go. So let's go ahead and get started. Except I have to turn on my stove, I guess. So this process usually takes me a while, but oh god. Let's just turn this. This chicken looks really good. How long do I marinate? Usually when I make this stuff, I marinate these for uh, usually overnight. I put these, I put this in the fridge last night at like, uh, it was near midnight because I was doing a randomizer race last night with uh, Crack City and Zaltus. So, I mean, the longer you marinate, the better, like always. So I decided to go for it and just do the full marinade. I very rarely, rarely ever mar let things marinate for less than at least two or three hours because the flavors you get when you marinate things are just so much better. Okay, where's my alt key? Is this my alt key? Fuck, I can't find it. Oh, here we go. I'm just going to move this in a little bit. There we go. Okay. Go break tables. Oh. See, I'm not a sports person, so I don't know what tailgating really is. I imagine it's just partying. Okay, the most important thing we will be using in this stream is this. This is a splatter screen. <laughs> and this will be making sure that this webcam up here and this laptop don't get covered in tomatoes. And it's probably going to happen anyway, but we shall see. So... I put it on slightly less than medium, not not quite medium low, but just medium to cook the chicken. Actually, I'll put it a little higher than medium for the chicken. And then, oh yeah, I still need to get my butter. And when I cook using butter. I mean, I'll be using this entire stick of butter, so. <laughs> this is a one-half cup of butter. Or a one-half pound of butter. Hey, don't mind any smoke you see coming up from my element. It does that. What's the recipe? Um, I could give you the entire recipe right now. The recipe calls for one half or one and a half pounds of uh, chicken thigh, but I um, I only use or I use usually two and a half because that's just what what I get and I hate like getting things. 
So this is what's in the marinade. Uh, it's hard to read on that. So it's a cup of plain yogurt, a half, the juice of a half a lemon, a half teaspoon of garam masala, a teaspoon of red chili powder, a teaspoon of ground coriander, a teaspoon of ground turmeric, a half a teaspoon of salt, and then one and a half pounds of boneless chicken thighs. This is butter chicken, by the way. John. This is a super. This is a super easy recipe that I found on YouTube a long time ago, and it tastes really good. So I just like it's not very traditional Indian style, but it still tastes the same. So who cares? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just less work and one less blender to clean. In this. Um, I'm going to be, um, just quickly searing a bunch of chicken thigh, and then in it is going, um, some tomato puree and a bunch of butter, and then some spices, which I already have set up here, sugar, curry powder, chili powder, and garam masala. And the reason I use curry powder isn't because curry powder is actually in the recipe, but it's because I don't have any place to get methy. <laughs> So, I looked online and a lot of people said use curry powder, it's the closest thing you'll get. So, I did. And then, there's a bunch of heavy cream and stuff that comes in too, but I'll get to that when I get to that. But, for now, it's just one thing at a time. So, I'm just going to go ahead and see this. So, I don't know if you guys want me to move this webcam, because down here is all great and stuff. But I don't know if you guys want to see the top corner of my pot or my pan here, wherever it is on here. <laughs> Hi, Bex. Welcome to Z Stream. So I'm just waiting for this to heat up. It's good for now. Okay. If it's fine, I'm just going to leave it like this because I have no use for the rest of my oven except for this. Except to store my chicken. But that's all going to be off here. And I'm going to be showing you guys what the chicken looks like after it's all seared and done because it looks really good. So, I'm not going to use this for now. For now, the first part is just basically getting all the chicken seared and stuff. And I probably should put oil in my pan before I start heating this up. And I also need to get my butter all set aside too, just so I have it all raring and ready to go. And we are done with this roll of paper towel, so it's a good thing I got out a different one. And then at some point, I'll be turning my attention over here, over this way to my rice cooker, which is sitting just over here on the table, that red pot on the table over there. And then I will, um, yeah. <sighs> So, I know I said I'm going to use butter for this, but I actually don't think I have any spare butter left. I might use canola oil. Well, I have a little bit of unsalted butter, but it's been in my fridge for a very, very long time. I am very surprised this is not moldy. This butter will not be able to... This butter will not be able to... Um, to saute everything here. But it'll get most of the job done, I think, because there's a few chunks left. Oh, God. It's a good thing you guys didn't see what I just did, because I almost cut my finger off. Yeah. Oh, God. No. Okay, there we go. So don't cook that. That is very metal, metallic. So, I don't know. I like cooking with butter. But. Alright, start searing the shit. So 
So this is the part that always takes me forever because you can't just dump it in. It needs to be seared, not steamed. So it can't like all clump up together. Oh my god, it smells so good. I love when Indian spices hit heat and just get, get all nice and heated. Yeah. Sizzling food is one of those things that's just like, it's just so good. I'm going to quickly make myself a drink while I do this because, oh, I need to shut my, back, my bedroom door too. If that door stays open, it is going to be really, really smoky in my room. Because by the time this is done, you guys could probably see it on these screens, it's going to be quite smoky in here because my oven doesn't have a working steam vent. <laughs> Do I have a window? I do have a window, but it's going to be too cold in here if I open it. When I move on to the tomatoes step, I'll have I'll have a chance to open this door here. No, it's just cranberry. I didn't make myself an alcoholic drink. I was going to, but I don't have any uh, tonic left. This is just um, low calorie cranberry juice. I don't drink a whole lot of pop or, or, uh, or juice that has so much sugar in it. But. Oh, it's so delicious. So this, this is the part where I just sit around and chat. I'm just waiting for this stuff to kind of sear up a little bit. And I think I'm going to increase the heat on this a little bit. No, wizard, it's not pot stickers. It's uh, it's um, chicken tikka. Soon to be tandoori chicken. So my goal here isn't to cook this chicken, it's just to sear it on two sides and then put it aside because it's all going to be cooked later. So this will be very brown by the time I'm done with it. Let's go ahead and move this so it's a little more up, I think. I don't really know exactly how I want this going. There we go, perfect. Yeah, I could make some sort of alcoholic drink because I think I have whiskey, but this is just me making food, John. I didn't I didn't go to any culinary school or anything. This is my clean kitchen. Okay, 
I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I did clean up my kitchen a little bit. So, Wiz, you never saw the, the tour of my place. But if you look over here, this sink used to be really, really messy. I wash, do my dishes very infrequently, but I actually did them for the stream today because I didn't want you guys seeing my messy kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things that's like, you know, when other people see your, uh, see your mess, you get really, you get really, uh, oh god, oh god, ow. Oh, why am I still doing this, ow. Chicken thighs are very fatty, and so... Since I've been putting my hand directly over it, sizzling chicken fat, it's starting to splatter up a little bit. This is all done. Time for the next wave of chicken. stove, by the way, so it's uh, kind of hard to cook sometimes on it. There we go. It's not the butter that's hot, it's the oil from the chicken. I am going to open this window, actually, because it's going to be too cold, but fuck it, I need, so I need something. Okay, there we go. I think this is the first time I've ever opened these blinds, to be honest. <laughs> I like it dark in my place, so I don't open my window very often. Guys, do you think gin and cranberry juice is a good drink? Or is this something I'm going to have to find out myself? Nobody likes that anyway, so. <laughs> so yeah, now that round one of this is done, here's what I got here. It's just like, just like mm, chicken just sitting and waiting for his buddies to join it. I'm just going to increase the heat just a little more. I know. I'm, I'm the same, John. A sizzling pan is just, like, the best thing ever. And I'm actually going to put a glove on my one hand because the spattering oil is starting to get really old. These are non-latex vinyl gloves. And these are the best things I ever bought for my kitchen. Handling meat and stuff like that, or peppers, really handy to have a glove like this. But what about me? I don't know. I wouldn't eat meat, to be honest. But I got the seasoning for it here. Half of. Oh, that one looks really nice and brown and crispy. The longer the chicken cooks in here with the remains of the chicken that came before it, the browner the pieces get. And it's just like, oh. Put it all inside me right now. Go ahead and move this down here. Evaporate one step further. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> it's funny, whenever I'm focusing down here, I'm always like, just focus, focus, focus. Then I look up and I'm like, oh, I didn't get to see myself handle the food. Oh, wait. So, yeah. What else is there to talk about while we wait for my chicken to cook? Quite a lot of Banjo Kazooie rec um, PVs happening recently. Nylon PV'd by two and a half minutes and got a 218. Dick missed the 203 yet again, leaving Haginator in second place still. That's all I really have to say about that. <laughs> Hag beat Stim in the 200% race? I mean, I doubt he ever will again. Alright, I think he's done. Let's move on. In my honest opinion, like both of them are like due for like really big PVs soon. But I think Skid is better than Hag at DT. chicken. I did not cut that one off into a, a very thin strip. Same with that one. Maybe they came from the same one that I shoddily cut up. stuff getting stuck to the bottom of my pan. That's going to be super delicious. Has Rare made anything lately? Uh, who cares? <laughs> Rare is... Rare is just... I don't know. Their games have gone to like racing games and stuff. Rare made Sea of Thieves, I guess, but the Rare from back then is different than the Rare from now. I mean, I've never played Sea of Thieves. I have no, I have no take on it. But all I heard was that from the from the demo they did before, compared to what they do now, it's not that different, and they didn't really add anything. A one-hour YouTube video on history. You probably know more about Rare than I do. All I know is that back then I was like, yeah, I'm a kid. I play video games. I don't care what game developers are, because Nintendo is the only one that exists. And now I'm like, okay, well, there's this and that, but I don't, I don't know what happened back then. Playtonic is made up of a bunch of people who used to work at Rare a long time ago, back in the glory days, and everyone is hoping that their games um, start to uh, uh, become what they used to be. A lot of people weren't a huge fan of Ukulele though, which is really sad to me because Ukulele was a really good game. But I kind of feel the same way about it because when I play Ukulele, I don't really have any want to replay it at all. I played it once, I 100%ed it the first time I played it, and then I never played it again. It's a good game, but it definitely has a lot of flaws in it that prevent me from enjoying it to its fullest.
Yeah. I mean, I don't know who originally started Rare. I could tell you people who worked on games at Rare, but I don't know who originally founded the company. I mean, two British guys is pretty obvious. <laughs> I mean, it's not the game dev's fault, it's all company. Like, if you're a small dev company and you if, and you get a, you get an offer to be bought by a bigger company, who are you to say no? Like, if Microsoft came up to you and said, hey, we're going to buy your company for this much money, would you go, uh, no? Or would you go, uh, just give me the money and I'll make whatever you want? You have guaranteed jobs because people want you to make games for their system, and that's great. But when your games suck, it's like, well, so much for that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Kinect had, like, I don't know a single game on the Kinect, like, to be honest. I don't, I never bought an Xbox One. I just have an Xbox 360. And I mean, I enjoyed like nuts and bolts, but I mean, it's just not the same, right? You gotta play through the game with a different mindset than you did the original Banjo games, otherwise you're gonna be in for a rough time. I mean, that's how I feel too, John. Like, the Kinect did suck a lot. <laughs> like, like, when the Xbox One announced, one of my favorite videos on YouTube that I go back and I watch every year because it's one of my favorite videos on YouTube, is the Kinect, or the uh, Xbox One launch uh, presentation at E3. That was the funniest thing I've ever seen, because literally everyone was like, uh, what? <laughs> and then Sony, at their conference, which was the next day, they were like sitting in the audience listening to the Xbox presentation like, oh dude, we gotta write this down. We gotta write this down so we can just slam them for it later. And it was, it was a killing. It was an absolute killing. But, I, I don't... <laughs> Yeah. I'm a Nintendo number one guy as well. Most of my favorite games are on Nintendo, but some of them aren't. Just depends. <laughs> yeah, that, that was really funny too. Like, I mean, they obviously just like took everything Xbox did and were like, okay, here's why this console sucks, and here's... I mean, it's funny that they could take it and laugh at it and not just, like, kind of just go, like, okay, here's why our system's better. It's like, here's why their thing is bad. Like, I mean, Microsoft fixed a lot of those problems, but they were still problems, right? I mean... Do you guys have a good enough view of the chicken here? Do you want a better view? I don't know if I can give you a better view, but I thought I'd offer. Alright, wave three of chicken is done. I think we only got two more to go. I'm running out of chicken in the bowl over here, so. And I don't want this to cook too long, because all this stuff that's on the bottom of my pan can only get cooked on there for so long before it starts to permanently become attached. Ow, that was really painful in my arm. Oh, 
Oh shit, hang on a sec. I don't think I'm going to have enough butter for this recipe. I'm going to have to hold on to this butter that I had instead of sitting here. Because I forgot it's 1.5 times. Because I thought I had more butter in my fridge, but I didn't. So I'm going to have to be a little sparing on it for round one. Yes, Blastoise. Yes. That is absolutely correct. In the recipe here, I'm supposed to use a half a cup of unsalted butter. And that's exactly what a half a pound of unsalted butter is here behind me. But I'm doing 1.5 times, so I need three quarters of a cup. And this little chunk of butter is not the same as a half a cup of butter. Or a quarter cup of butter. So, I mean, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Okay, I might have just enough. So, I'm going to say that I have just enough. And if I don't, it's not going to be that hard to tell uh, in the end. It's still sizzling, it is, yes. Uh, I think I have enough to do one more layer of chicken, and then after that we can start doing the butter chicken sauce. Once all the chicken is done and out of the way, then we can start focusing on the fun part. Watching tomatoes boil down until there's nothing but tomato residue and fat. That is the funnest part of making this dish for me, is playing around with the tomatoes in the pot. And I am not lying about that. <laughs> Sounds sadistic. <laughs> I can never remember when I'm supposed to add the spices into the mixture, though. If it's, uh... When I add the tomatoes, or when I add the second thing of butter. That's one thing that always messes me up. I'm pretty sure it's earlier, because cooking things for longer sounds just right to me. Let's go ahead and look at it. I have a play tube on YouTube full of stuff that I like cooking. This is where I got the recipe from, so I usually uh, look back on it every now and then. Okay, it's on my first edition. Yeah, that's what I thought. It, would, it wouldn't make sense to add it too late, because then it's not cooking for very long with it. And I don't feel like putting on another glove, so we're going to put on the heavy-duty one. This is my UV glove. It's an oven glove, but it's got fingers. And so I'm just going to use this. It'll be, be nice and easy. Then a disposable glove. Okay, I, I missed that in chat. Okay, let's see. I want a view from inside of my mouth of me eating it. Can I provide? I mean, I could, <laughs> but I'm not going to. Ooh, this stuff looks nice and blackened. I think I'm almost out of chicken though, please. No, it's still good. Still good. I'll just let it cook for a little less. Oh, this stuff smells so good. I want to eat it. I want to eat these pieces of chicken right now. 
but not really because they're undercooked. <laughs> Actually, this place isn't looking a whole lot smokier than I thought. Oh yeah, because because I opened the window. Duh. Whoever said open the window, that was a really good idea. You are the savior of this cooking screen. Okay, one more layer of chicken. And then we can start the new event. Holy shit, that was a big piece. Oh, that was two pieces, that's fine. Yeah, this will be the rest of the chicken. I hope. It just won't stop. It's hard to tell where the pieces of chicken start and where they stop in here. Because they're all still covered in this yogurt mixture. And because it's pieces of chicken, they kind of all blend together, but yeah, this is definitely the remainder of the chicken, so we can get rid of our bowl. There we go. Alright. Put this in the sink, and I will be right back. to suck the smoke away. I do not. So one thing I really like about curry is how it tastes. But cooking with turmeric is one of the most dangerous things in the world because it stains everything you ever loved. Oh, where's my thing? Turmeric is like Everything it touches just turns yellow. It's like, uh. This is really fun. I should do cooking streams more often. I just don't like dragging my laptop out of my room because I have so many cords that need to plug into this place and that. And I don't have a PC, so it kind of all just comes from here. Okay, so that's going to be the final flip on that, so let's see what we need to do now. So I guess it's time to start doing the butter thing. Butter and tomatoes. Ooh, that was wet. Oh, it's because I had the, the refrigerated thing. And then we can see whether or not everything's going to get covered in tomatoes. So I'm probably not going to use both of these. But I will use all of one of them and some of another. How's that rice going? I actually haven't started it yet. I'll be starting it once I pull off this chicken. Because by the time this is done, and then I cook the rest of the sauce, the rice will be done around the same time. I actually should start the rice now, because I'm almost done. So I'll hit the start on that button there. Yeah. I use a rice cooker because I cooked rice in a sauce pot for four years before I decided, you know what, I need to buy a rice cooker so I can just hit a button and it's done. <laughs> and I have basmati rice in my rice cooker because it is my favorite rice to eat curry with, well, Indian curry. 
Thai curry, I'd rather have jasmine rice. And with fish, I like uh, just white, long green, sticky rice. Yeah. Rice cookers and slow cookers are two of the best inventions ever created. Okay, so now that I'm not really focusing any attention over there, let's focus more attention down here. Yeah, right in there. This is the, the best view that we're going to get. Hopefully, uh, my webcam lens won't get splattered with tomato, but we can only pray that that doesn't happen. Okay, time for the main event. So all the chicken is cooked. Uh, partially. And then we're going to go ahead and add it back in here later. But first, it's butter time. So, half of my butter is in the pot. And then I should probably add another chunk of this other one here. I can add half of it now and half of it later. So this is going to get all yellow with all the stuff that we created. So let's get all nice and buttery and in there. I'm going to turn the heat down to medium now. And then we're going to add in my tomatoes, which I need three cups of. Three cups of tomato puree. So we got one, two, two and a bit, three, and then just a little bit more because I said so. stirring the bottom to get all this stuff that was on the bottom nice and into the sauce. That's a lot of butter. That's only half the butter we're adding, Batman. And yes, I do, Ricky. You know how I feel about food. You know that I get excited when I make food. happens when you cook meat. Okay, so now we're going to let this cook until it starts to um, starts to separate. And by that, I mean all the fat that came from the butter and the tomatoes are basically going to be the only thing left. So, I mean, there's a lot of water in crushed tomatoes because, I mean, there's a lot of water in tomatoes in general. So I want all of that to evaporate so that there's nothing left but butter. <laughs> Two sticks of butter total? No, it's only one stick, Batman. I only put in a half a stick there. And then here's all my spices. Again, curry powder, which I'm substituting for methi. Chili powder, garam masala, and sugar. Those are all going to go right in there. Um, the actual measurement of butter Batman is, uh, I guess it's one cup, one cup of, or a half a cup of butter. So that's 250 grams, basically. 
well, a half a stick of butter or whatever. So now we got this nice, really, really strongly smelling tomatoey paste. It's going to start bubbling on me now because this stuff is thick. And thick tomatoes like bubbling like that. So now we are going to cover it with this. <laughs> and you will see why. Because it is going to get really, really fucking messy if I don't. Draining the rest of the tomatoes from this one jar into the other. What you can't see on the screen okay, after I'm done this tomato job here, which I guess I could put the lid on it, it would make it a little faster. Now you know that's enough. Let me go ahead and rinse this out real quick. So yeah, if you guys can see all that stuff that's forming on the top of my splatter screen, that's because the tomatoes are splattering through the screen so hard that they're like coming up a little bit. And that is exactly, that is exactly why I have the splatter screen there. And when I remove it in a sec, I really hope bad things don't happen. So I'm going to point it this way so things don't splatter towards my laptop. There we go. I really wish I knew why this stuff splattered. Ow, fuck. Splattered for me, but not for anyone else. I just think it's just because it's so thick. Like, this is also why I chose to wear a black shirt for this stream. But this needs to cook down a lot, and it's not going to cook down any faster than it will. So, so this is the unfortunate, boring part now. It'll be a little easier to cook once I throw in the cream, but we gotta wait. Is this gonna be spicy? No, it is not. I don't make spicy curry. I'm not a huge fan of um, spicy anything. Like, a medium spice is nice, but I like butter chicken specifically uh, when it's more mild. Yeah, it's like forming like little bubbles on the bottom of that. I think it's because I cook in a, um, in a regular, like, um, stainless steel pan instead of cast iron. I would love to get a cast iron pot to do this instead of a... Uh, so this, but I also don't know if it has to do with uh, the tomatoes themselves, because this happens to me when I make chili too. But either way, like, I mean, actually, these are all probably spatters from my uh, from my meat, but. If you guys have a look around here with this webcam, you'll see that, like, this paper towel that's on front of my laptop already has, like, tiny little splatter bits on it. So does, like, my little spoon tray here. And then down in the front of my oven, there's some down there, too. So, I mean, 
Like, it just kind of gets everywhere. This is my least favorite part about making this dish, but it's just so fucking delicious that I can't hold it. There we go. I think that's a better view. Clean those up. I'm not going to clean them up now because they're just going to get like that for the rest of the cooking process. So I'm going to go ahead and stir this up a little bit. Stir it every now and again just to make sure that like nothing on the bottom like happens and you know it's done when you run your when you run your wooden spoon across the bottom of the pot and the tomatoes don't take the place yeah i mean not like clean. there's some things that i don't clean up after like dishes and stuff i'll leave by the sink for a while but like Messes from food all over a stovetop is something that, like, I mean, obviously I'll wait until, like, the, uh, obviously I'll wait until the, uh, oven's cooled down a little bit, but this is really nice, actually, because I can hold the splatter screen, like, up right here, like, in front of my face so it doesn't come up at me, and then I can kind of look at my stream to see exactly what's going on. I kind of like that. Oh, we got a bit of a show going on. I just saw one, like, try to escape into the stratosphere. That is crazy. So, yeah, once I do this, and, like, the tomatoes don't take the place, then it'll be ready to go. And this is just take one. Batman was surprised earlier when he said, wow, that's a lot of butter. Well, I'll show you guys what I'm going to be adding after the butter. So, butter chicken has two main ingredients after you dump in the tomatoes and the spices. The rest of the butter, which is on the table here behind me, which I'm actually going to move the pot, so it's not here. So, here's the rest of the butter we're going to be adding. But I'm also going to be adding, um, what's the measurement on this? I'm going to be adding three cups of cream, and this is what I use because it's the highest I can get. 40% is better, but 35, 35% heavy cream. And I'm gonna be adding three cups of that, which is 750 milliliters. Hey lady, how was the rest of your randomizer? Where, where was Boomerang? Where did you find Boomerang? Screeches for days. Was it in shadow? Oh, it was in Spirit Temple. Where in Spirit Temple? Inject the fat in the veins, yeah. But yeah, like I said, the recipe I'm using is a one and a half times recipe. So normally it only calls for two cups of cream and one stick of butter, or a half stick of butter, I mean. You didn't need it for anything. Yes, you did. The boomerang was in the spirit temple. Oh, um, did you need to get anything in shadow temple? Oh, you never went to shadow temple? Something must have been in logic. Or you just forgot. Check the, uh... Maybe you, like, forgot to grab something. Did you check all the shops? Were you doing shop sanity? No, because she found Requiem. Oh, you weren't doing shop sanity? I don't know. Yeah, check your spoiler log, because it would tell you what the the hover boots were supposed to be for. Because the game, just because you don't need the hover boots for something doesn't mean that they're uh, in logic, or not in logic or something. Okay, so I'm going to give this another stir. We're starting to good, do good on the smear test here. This stuff is starting to thicken up real nice, and it's bubbling real nice too, as you can see right here and here. It's very splotchy. 
You will cook too. Oh baby, what are you heating up? <laughs> what are you microwaving from frozen? I would don't believe for a second that either of you cook. Bacon? Just bacon? Like you were just going to make bacon and eat it? At least make a bacon sandwich. Bacon and tomato and mayonnaise on a sandwich. It's beautiful. Bake a cake and put bacon on it? I mean, having some like candied bacon and like garnishing it on the vanilla cake is actually really good. It could be sub 3, but it wasn't. But it could have been. That's the problem with a randomizer. When you find items, when you find items so early that you're like, man, this seed is going great. It's like, wait a sec. It's going too green. Oh, was that a pop from my rice cooker? Oh, no, it's not. All right, smear test. It's like halfway there. Sorry you guys can't see through this screen, but I just, I, I can't. I can't remove it. Okay. I went and I shut my window because, like I said, it's starting to get cold in here. But, yeah. Alright. And while this is cooking down, I'm going to slowly, I'm going to go use the washroom. So I'll be right back. And then we will be back for more sizzling cooking. Hey, I'm back. Hey, Saffromir. Um, I'm cooking butter chicken. Um, I've already cooked the chicken. It's uh, right over here. Let me give you a glimpse as to what this is. This is my tandoori chicken that I cooked up. Let's show it in front of this webcam here. I think it might be a little better. Oh, I almost dumped a bunch of delicious juices onto my keyboard, which would have been really terrible. A link to the past run. Floyd, are you a link to the past? A link to the past randomizer runner? Oh, baby, it's starting to separate. Okay. This is exactly the kind of stuff I was waiting to see. Ooh, it almost fell off the burner. I was only doing it in one spot. Okay, let's see. Alright, it's almost there. It's not quite there yet, but it's really close. It's really close. Oh, first run. Dude, Link to the Past randomizer is, like, way harder for me. But then again, I only say that because I uh, I don't know Link to the Past as well as I do Ocarina of Time. I really wish Banjo-Tooie randomizer was a thing that could happen, but there's just no items in that game. So, can't really do anything. So, if you look around at the pot, it's kind of hard to tell with the webcam there. But, like, it's, like, it's not really... It's not really the same consistency as it used to be anymore. This is just like pure tomato and oil. And that's why it's able to be like spread like this. Because it's just 
oil and fat separating bulk tomato. And this is exactly what I was looking for. However, it still needs to cook down just a little bit more. And then we'll be ready for round two. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, Ploy. I mean, when I first started doing Ocarina of Time randomizers, it was like, I know this game like the back of my hand. And then the first couple randomizers I did, I just, like, kept forgetting checks because I was like, I forgot this even existed. And, I mean, that's still why I haven't done things like uh, scrub scrub sanity, shop sanity as well, because I don't even know where they all are. It's just one of those things. I mean, I remember there's one in Dodongo's Cavern in that room with the two chests, and there's one behind a bomb of a wall. Because I used to think there was something back there as a kid, and it took me really a long time to get there. Alright, so this is doing less bubbling now, and it's doing more sizzling, which is kind of what I wanted. Which means it's probably really, really, really close to being done now. The longer it cooks, the less there is to cook down. Which I know is really obvious sounding, but... Okay, so when I push it to the side, it's basically, it's not separating anymore. Or it's not coming back together anymore. It's basically tomato paste now. So, sending out food on my viewers. I have lots here. This this makes, like, for, like, for a good one, like, a good portion for someone, probably about... Seven or eight people. So, I mean, if y'all want to come and grab a bowl, that would be great. Just uh, grab your grab your closest flight and come on down. I'll save a seat for you. Oh, but I only have one seat over there. <laughs> Guess not. Okay, this is done. So now that this is done, I'm going to put my, my splatter screen over there. Hopefully I won't get punished for that. And now we're going to do the fun part. We're going to add more butter. So we added all that butter before. Now we're going to add a bunch more in here. Do I live alone? I do, wizard. I do. And now we're going to spread this butter around. Let it cook, melt down a little bit. That is so much butter. That is exactly the same amount of butter I put in like 20 minutes ago. Or 10 minutes ago. I don't know how long it's been. Holy shit, I've been streaming for an hour and 42 minutes already. I'm glad I decided to do this because making this is boring as shit. Okay, so now we have the cream and I'm going to add the cream in. And this is going to make it really, really unhealthy. One cup. Two cup. This is 35% cream, by the way. So the tomatoes are like a concentrated paste, and the butter and the cream are basically like slowly cooking themselves into it now. And so eventually, it looks really white now because it's all cream and all the tomatoes are on the bottom. But as I stir it, it's going to start turning a really, really, really nice orange color, which starts to resemble what butter chicken actually kind of looks like. And in here are two still pretty big chunks of butter, which are going to have to melt down, but that will be absolutely no problem. You can't eat dairy or eggs? Well, there, I doubt there is a non-dairy vegan substitute of butter chicken. 
There's a lot of different curries you can make, but I doubt there's a substitute for dairy in this recipe. I honestly have no idea what I'm going to be using that cream for, ever. So, as far as I know, it's probably just going to sit in my fridge until I decide to take it down the drain. Yeah, that's something that I really like too. Like, I'm not vegan or anything. Like, I, I eat anything and everything, but I like cooking all sorts of things because you never know when you might need to cook a vegan recipe for someone. And that's why I learned to cook um, uh, chana masala. It's another Indian curry that uses only chickpeas, and I believe it's completely vegan. But it's very, very tasty as well. So now the sauce has become sort of like really smooth like this. And this is exactly what we want. It's because of like all that, that pasty tomato stuff. And then on top of that, a whack ton of butter and a whack ton of cream. Just kind of making it really rich. And now, because most of it is cream... <laughs> we got to wait for it to come up to temperature again. And then once it starts um, boiling a little bit and it kind of cooks that taste of the cream out, then you can add the uh, add in the um, chicken and we can finish, let that finish cooking. So I'm going to take this out. Actually, I'll just do that. There we go. The only thing I don't like about cooking curry is that depending on which kinds of curry you're cooking, you may never use an ingredient ever again. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of curries that use these peppers or chilies or random ingredients that are only used in curry. And if you don't make curry, then they will just sit and won't get used up. Yeah. This consistency, Max, is like, is just, it's, it, uh, it's so good, like, when you eat it, too. Like, it's exactly the same, like, like, it, it just looks nice and silky and smooth, and it just tastes really good, too. And it's just like, duh. This, a lot of people call it gravy, and a lot of people call it sauce, so I don't know. But in the end, it goes on the rice, and it's very good. And the problem with this part is that you kind of have to stir it every now and again when it starts to heat up and bubble. Because it has all that cream in it, because it has all that cream in it, it'll start to get a skin on it if you let it cook. And nobody wants a skin on top of their curry. I don't taste as I cook. Not not then. I will I will now though. I'm I'm just letting it cook just a little bit. Just a little bit because um, just because of the cream. But once <clears throat> once it's all like back and boiling and bubbling again, kind of like it is now, but a little more. I'm going to put salt in it, because I didn't put any salt in it before. Well, I put a little bit of salt in it before, but it wasn't very much, just enough to kind of marry the things together. 
But all the spices and stuff, I don't need to put any more of that in. I know that, that those are good. But how salty you want it from here is kind of like, just kind of depends. I used unsalted butter. I use salted butter for some things, but not butter chicken. Because sometimes I want curry not salty, and sometimes I do want it salty. I don't really care whether or not I use salted or unsalted butter, but there's certain things that I always use salted or unsalted butter for. Like, if I'm cooking any sort of meat or anything like that, I always use salted butter because 100% of the time I'm going to be adding salt to it as well. But if I eat, cook eggs or something like that, I like using unsalted butter because eggs, um, <clears throat> eggs can get really salty with a little bit of salt. So I use this tiny little spoon for tasting. <laughs> it's just like this spoon that's like too small to use for anything else. That's really good, but it hasn't cooked enough. I can still taste the uh, I can still taste the tomatoes <clears throat> really strongly. Double dip. I don't care. I'm the only one eating it. <clears throat> and also, I don't have any flesh eating diseases. I will dip this spoon into my curry sauce way more times. Even if I'm not sure, they'll never know. Now that it's starting to bubble and stuff, and I taste it a little bit, I'm going to add a little bit more salt. And then we're going to add in that chicken. So all this tandoori chicken that I made earlier. Oh, look at all those juices spilling in there. Oh, God. Oh, God. The carnage. This is going to be really good. So, gravy tasted fine on its own, but now it's got a ton of chicken in it. And the chicken is still partially undercooked, so now we are going to let this cook for, I think, like 10 minutes or something like that. I don't know, I kind of usually just eyeball it. I don't really use timers when I cook. I just kind of know. There we go. Delectable. And I would have tasted some of that juice that came out because it looked really good and covered in that seasoning. But like I said, that chicken isn't cooked all the way through. So now it's kind of getting to the part where I think I might consider putting that splatter shield back on because I don't know how bubbly this is going to get, but I think it might get somewhat bubbly. So I'm going to quickly wipe off the raw tomato with a paper towel that formed on it before. And oh my, this looks disgusting. When you go to throw something in your garbage, and the garbage throws something out, I think it is time to change my bag. 
<laughs> well, that is future GDA's problem. So this is the part of the cooking process where I would go do my dishes because this generates a lot of dishes usually. But because I have you guys, I just don't care. Thanks, Jimmy. Am I making rice with it? Yes, I have a rice cooker going over here, which is keeping warm, which means that my rice is done. It's just uh, basmati rice. I just threw it in a rice cooker. If you guys look, it's over here. Here's my rice cooker. And for those of you guys that didn't see, here's a tour of my house. So over here, we have my candy. I ate all the mini Rolos, but we still got some crunchy McTavish bars in there, or uh, coffee bars. Then we got my rice cooker. Then we got my pantry, which is all my spices are over here, which they're not really spices. It's sugar, flour, and macaroni, <laughs> and rice. So, yeah. Paper towels, then I got, I don't even know what this is, like it's an empty jar, we got some, we got some uh, hot chocolate mix, we got some pizza sauce, and we got two jars of, uh, two jars of fondue chocolate. Then we got Tide Pods, my favorite meal. Kleenex, empty jars, which used to be full of uh, brown sugar and uh, something else, I don't remember what was in the other one. Then we got another thing of juice, an empty bin, because I keep all my ice cream bins, because you never know when you might need them. Then we got some noodles, some salsa, some chipotle dressing, some candy, a thing of KD. For those of you guys that live in America, we don't have Kraft macaroni and cheese. We got Kraft dinner, or KD for short. This is, this is good shit. Yeah, and then we still have three boxes of cheese that's left over there. And then, do you recognize that little black box that's at the end of the, uh... Do you recognize that little black box that's at the end of my shelf there? Lady? Because that used to be yours. <laughs> well, the cheese its used to be, uh, 11 boxes big. But I've eaten most of them, so now there's only three left. Let's go ahead and stir my chuck. Oh my god. It's starting to smell really, really, really good. Yeah, I guess you can't tell what it is from that far away. What it is, is it's your box of uh, random tools. Hammers, screwdrivers, this is a mat. It was one of those little things. Are those still from SGDQ? Yes, they are, Batman. Yes, they are. All right, let's see what kind of cheese is... Okay, I think it's time to do a taste test for my fire chicken again. More salt. A lot of more salt.
Okay. Still has to keep cooking though. It's not nearly finished. Do I take any culinary classes? No, I do not. All the cooking that I've done is just from learning on YouTube, and from people, and from watching. Thank you for the 25 bits, Jonas. And sorry, I forgot to say thank you for the bits earlier, lady. Thank you for the 100 bits. through 100 at me as well. I didn't see that. I missed, all, I missed a lot of bits earlier. I don't have my tracker open or anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. Give me food. Yeah, I see that. I'm terrible. I usually don't pay attention to all that stuff. And holy crap, I need to open my door. It's getting really hot in here. And before it gets really, really cold. <laughs> it is outside and all the heat that's going on in here from all the cooking it's um it's like made every metal surface in here start sweating like it's near the door like the doorknob to go outside is sweating the windows are all sweating when i went in the bathroom earlier that window was sweating too it's just so hot in here and it's cold outside because it gets cold in canada I mean, it's toasty in here. That's why. I mean, first off, I've been cooking, but... What is my thermostat set at? Holy shit, 23. To 22. Because my thermostat has a thing where it won't change temperature until it reaches a certain temperature. Then it goes way hotter than that. So it's like... Thanks, wizard. <laughs> Alright, so, so to take you over to the mysterious pot over here that I was uh, dealing with earlier, let's see if I can form a good thing here. Here's my rice cooker. Go ahead and move it out a little bit. It has been cooking rice ever so diligently and it is currently keeping warm. So I'm going to go over there and I'm going to fluff up the rice a little bit, just so it doesn't get all dried out. Since it's done, I don't want it to kind of stick in there in place. There we go. Put the lid back on. And then take the camera back to the butter chicken cam, getting ready for its debut. 17.25 Celsius. That is ridiculously cool. Yeah, the rice is perfect. That's why I like rice cookers. <laughs> rice cookers are just so wonderful. Uh-oh. My webcams are desynced a little bit. Oh well. As long as the one you guys are looking at has the... Uh, What's really low? Oh, my uh, my webcam? No, it's fine. It has a little hook on the end, so it can't fall off. 
It's just giving you the, the ultra zoom in. Let's move it over a little. There we go. Uh, they weren't desynced when I started, but I guess I didn't notice it because I was just not doing anything. Okay, right, time for another stir, I think. Stir in that skin that is formed on the surface, because I'm a bad boy. And didn't... Stir it sooner. Stirring this with a hand guard on, or a glove, I must be out of my damn mind. This should be getting ready to be almost done. It smells really good. Let's see what kind of taste we got going on. It's starting to thicken up too, which is what I wanted. It didn't. Tasted a little bit too much like tomato last time I tasted it. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's not quite there, but it's almost there. Just another couple minutes. Holy shit, that was a good that was a good taste. Was a, that was a good goo taste. Everyone type good goo in chat. Where's where's good goo? Here we go. Good goo. <laughs> I think it's at like the perfect level of saltiness too. I don't think I need to add anything to it. Yeah, that's perfect. You were making that face because you were playing BK, and something happened to you, and you were just like, it was that, really? Really? I think I, I, think I clipped it when you were speedrunning something in Bubble Loop Swamp. I can't remember. But it was something that happened, and it was just like... <laughs> Alright, this butter chicken is about ready to be done, so... I'm going to... Grab my bowl, and then we'll eat it. My stove top is so wet. Uh, it is a little bit. But that's because of all the splatters that have happened. The splatter shield can only keep it so clean, but around the edges it still kind of goes over a little bit. This is this is why I was worried about doing buttered chicken as my first recipe, because I was afraid the splatter was going to go over here. But this is actually the cleanest I've ever had in my kitchen. Like, I have a... Um, this is my broken uh, steam guard that doesn't work. Like, the light works. Oh, that would have been really good to have on during the thing. But the fan doesn't work. What does that look like? Oh shit, I should have had this on the whole time. Fuck. Yeah, that's a way better look at the chicken now that you guys can see it in the light. Holy shit. Completely forgot that that light was even there. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Mm. Yeah, good to know for next one. I don't know if there will be a next one. bubbled onto my finger. Okay, I would say this stuff is ready to go. This chicken is, or this gravy is really hot, and the chicken's been in it for a while, so I would say it's probably fully cooked now. And it has been on here for a little while, so I'm gonna... God damn it. <laughs> That's so painful. It's just like in such a tiny spot. Ooh. Alright, so this is done, so I'm gonna remove it from the heat. Take it off. 
out the heat. Give it one little stir over here. And now we assemble so you guys can watch me eat in jealousy. So, first, huh, I did get some butter chicken on the top of my webcam here. First, here's how I like serving my curry. So, first we go back to the rice cooker. I'm going to take some rice. I'm going to shove it into one half of the bowl. Like so. So, just so you guys can see the spatial awareness of my bowl, we have rice on one side and nothing on the other. That's nice. And then. Set up my webcam over here. And here we're going to take a ladle. Spoon some of that. Just giving that one more little stir, just because the green is separating a little bit. Ooh, that almost went in. I'm going to take up my pot buddy one of these times. You like make sure my spoons don't fall in. Let me take it and go. Uh, uh, another piece of chicken in here. There we go. Nice and simple. Then I'm gonna put it over here. And then I'm going to remove all this shit from my laptop. Time to move my laptop back to my table. Take all this duct tape and paper towel off of my laptop. Oh my god, that was not a good idea doing that. Because the paper towel was covering my fan, and the bottom of my laptop is really, really fucking hot. <laughs> I'm actually surprised that my laptop didn't overheat when I was, uh, when I was making that. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, I need a spoon. So I don't know what Twitch wants me to do for eating. I guess switch my thing to social eating because that's what happens. Or else I'll get banned. 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 There we go. I don't really know if I need two cams anymore. Don't get banned for social social eating. At least now I can type. I don't even know if I was supposed to have, like... Is there even a social eating anymore? I typed in social eating, and it's like food and drink, cooking simulator, campfire cooking. I'm just going to stay on food and drink. I don't care what Twitch says. Oh boy, butter chicken. So, let's... Get rid of this for a sec. Ugh, my hair is like done its thing because I'm sweating now because it's so fucking hot in my kitchen. It's my low low HD cam. This is my laptop. Which which camera is in sync with my mouth? This one or this one? 
Yeah, I, I think I don't have to change it anymore. Oh, both of them are the same again? Oh, okay, they are. Okay. I thought it wasn't before. Oh, well, I'll just sit here and eat this. Normally, I would do this at my computer, but it's like, whatever. Oh, and I guess I need paper towel, too. I'm a heathen who doesn't use napkins. I only use paper towels because they're basically like bigger napkins, except they don't run out. So let's see how I want to sort this out. So this one's coming up here, and this one's... Oh, wait, I did that the other way around. Yeah, there we go. This one's coming down here. You know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to eat it. So I kind of have them like separated in my bowl. It's just the way I eat curry. And then I kind of separate them at the middle. But. Oh, God. Hot. Oh. Something, something steaming rice in my mouth. Ugh. Eat my food and tell us. It's so delicious. Yeah, I always have my water bottle on hand. Just how do you? Oh boy, time for a piece of chicken. Let's see if I actually cooked it all the way through. Success! You haven't made anything yet? <laughs> oh, dude, this is so good. I wish all of you could come over and eat my cooking right now. This feels weird just eating food in front of a webcam. I'm going to shut off the shitty one. Dude, I would love to cook this for you, Batman, but just send it through my computer. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter to me. Like, I eat things on stream all the time before I, like, start playing games. But this is, like, I made this and now I'm eating it, so whatever. Let's go ahead and adjust this down ever so slightly. But then you can't see my face. This is just weird now. I'm not used to this HD webcam. I never use it because it slows down my computer when I'm streaming, having too many things plugged into the USB. There's no way I could keep up with a weekly cooking stream. Oh shit. Luckily, I just sweeped my floor yesterday, so it's clean. Except for that hair. <laughs> now, this is just degenerate. But I swear I sweeped and, va and vacuumed two days ago. GDO drop shit count three? When did I ever drop shit before? I don't remember dropping anything while cooking. Alright, now is just the point in the curry where I just mix the rest of the rice with the rest of the curry. Oh, 
dropping the, uh, that wasn't a salt shaker, that was a cumin thing, cumin. No. I mean, I know my floor. I know what crawls on it. And one other thing, you're going to have to prove to me Atticus, because I don't think it was three. Pretty sure it wasn't three. I mean, I'm not going to lie, this place has a ton of tiny little baby spiders in it that seem to come out whenever. My worry is that they'll one day grow up to be big boys, but every, I mean, I've only lived here since last February, and it wasn't that bad in the summer, so I think everything's going to be good. I will live peacefully with the spider folk. This curry is so good. I don't cook it every day. Especially this. Like, th if I ate this every day, I would get really fat. Because you guys saw what went in it. <laughs> um, a lot of my diet right now is poke, which I buy from the store that I work at. And poke is basically just raw tuna with, like, a sauce on it. But stuff like this is just, like, good soul food. I freeze some of it, Batman. I'll just eat it until all the rice is gone, and then I'll freeze the rest of the sauce. Well, the only the only thing that could have made this better was if I had nan bread to eat it with. But I mean, other than that, that was some really fucking good curry. Not gonna lie, curry percent done. And it only took me around two hours, which is about what I was expecting. 